All right, welcome back. Only two lessons left in chapter eight, so we're nearing the end. I know this was a really long chapter. Um, so, so far, we've figured out all the pieces to write linear equations. Now, what do we do with those in practical life? Um, basically, data points in real life, so like if I was measuring uh, how tall each, each person is in our class, or even how tall you were in your life is not necessarily a linear equation. Sometimes data points are a little all over the place. But we still like to be able to predict future um, data points. So whenever, whenever we don't have an, points that line up exactly in a line, what we're going to do is draw what we call a line of fit. Now a line of fit is going to be, when we're looking at a whole bunch of different points, it's going to be a line that's close to most of the points. It's close to most of the points, and I'll draw a graph so that it makes a little bit more sense. Um, so if I had, let's draw our axes, it's not exactly straight. Um, if I had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, so 20. These will be things like, usually it's years, like in our first year, our second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, and then we're like measuring something along the way. So in practical life, lines aren't always exactly perfect because if I'm measuring like, I don't know, how many, how many trips to the doctor I took in a year, that's not necessarily going to be a perfectly straight line. Or if I was measuring how tall a tree was each year, it could grow in a linear way, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, and real life isn't always exactly perfect. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to have a table of our points. Um, it's going to look like this, same as our other tables with X and Y, um, but this time we're going to have, let's see, in our first year we're going to do 10, in our second year it was like 13, You'll be given a table of actual data points. So each year something else happens and it's growing progressively. You're going to plot these points on your graph. So we're going to go when x is 1, y is 10. So we're going to start at 1 and go to 10. 2 is 13. So we're going to go like halfway here. 3 is 15. 4 is 16, so only a little bit higher than 3. 5 is all the way up to 20. And 6 is 23. So it's pretty linear, but not exactly. Right? If I took my ruler and I lined it up along here, it's not going to give me an exactly perfect measurement. Here, let me actually cut this. What we're going to do to find the line of fit is I'm going to choose two points in my scatter plot that are going to give me a line that's closest to most of the points. 
So for example, actually these, these points are all pretty close. But like I wouldn't choose these points because look, then this line is really far away from all the other points. But if I chose maybe these two, then I'm hitting almost all of them, right? So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna choose these two points because when I put my ruler on those two points, I hit most of I hit most of the other ones. <laughs> right? So to find our line of fit now, it's going to be our line that's closest to most of the points. I'm going to use our strategies that we learned in 8-8 eight, eight to write the equation of the line, but using these two points. So these two points are 2 and 13, and 5 and 20. Now we're going to do what we did in 8-8, eight, eight, finding the equation of the line. We have two points, so that's going to mean we're going to use our point slope form, right? We're going to label it x1, y1, x2, y2. We're going to put it into our slope equation. Hopefully you remember our slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus, whoops, <laughs> x1. We're going to put that in to find our slope. Our y2 is 20. Our y1 is 13 over x2 minus x1, 5 minus 2. So we get 20 minus 13, which is 7, over 5 minus 2, which is 3. So we're going to say our slope is about 7 thirds because that's already a fraction in its simplest form. So this is our slope. Now what are the other components we need for our slope for our point slope form? Remember it's y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus x1. Now we found our slope and we've got our x1 and our y1 so we can go ahead and write our equation y minus 13 equals 7 thirds times x minus 2. That's kind of a messy way to write it, but the usefulness of this now is, I'm going to say that's our best approximation of our line, and this is with our data points 1 through 6, what's going to happen in year 8? So what I'm going to do, if I ask you that, what's going to happen in year 8? I know what's happening in years 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? This is our x, our years are our x's. So if I want to know what's happening in year 8, I'm going to plug 8 in for x in that equation. That's why we found our equation of our line of fit, because we're trying to find a line that's going to help us best predict what the future years will hold. So I'm going to plug 8 in where x is. Again, y minus 13 equals 7 thirds times x, or not x, we're plugging 8 in where x is, 8 minus 2. And now you're going to solve for y, just like you do in any of your other algebra equations. We're going to do 8 minus 2 is 6, so we're going to have y minus 13 equals 7 thirds times 6, 7 thirds times 6, see if you can do it in your head really fast, <laughs> give you a second, um, but 7 thirds times 6 is going to be, here let me, maybe I should write it, I'm going to erase uh, this bit, hopefully you guys got it written down, but I need a little bit more room to write. Let me copy this up here. y minus 13 equals 7 thirds times 6. All right, and 7 thirds times 6 is going to be 14. So y minus 13 equals 14. Now we have to keep getting y by itself. 
So we're gonna add 13 to this side, and whatever I do to this side, I have to do to the other side. So y equals 14 plus 13, which is 27. So our prediction is going to be in year eight, whatever we're measuring is going to be 27. We'll add that to our table. And you can usually tell if you like continue your graph and put this up at 24, 27. It should still look like a continuation of your line. That's how you'll know you picked a good line of fit is if this is like in line with it. So those are our four steps we're going to Make our plot, estimate our line of fit, write the equation, and then we can use that equation to predict future values. This way, whatever year they ask us for, if they ask us for 10, if they ask us for 25, whatever happens, we just plug it into this equation and we make a prediction. So on your homework, when it asks you for predictions, that's what you're going to do. But know that you have to find your, uh, the equation of your line first. Hopefully that all made sense. I know this is taking it a little bit more complicated from before, but um, if you have any questions, just email me, let me know.